playoff system going, and then slowly but surely, baseball's on its way back. The thing is, it's like, listen, business-wise, it's an opportune moment for you to give a, a spike to your Nielsen numbers now that people have been without sports for so long. So people are clamoring to get back and just watch something. They don't, they don't even care if it's a ha at rooster fighting at this point. It's an opportune moment for you to come back. And I feel like baseball, and I'd say this more in a sense of like they're just two parties that couldn't agree on what compensation was going to be, which is owners want owners to give you a prorated deal and the players want to get paid full pay because they feel like they're taking risk. Both parties got a point. But at this point, you got you, you to gotta come up with some type of compromise and make it happen because if it's America's pastime, or which was once America's pastime, it's is your opportune moment to get back and, 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 and take a grasp of being a number one sports uh, league again. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's just it's the overall sense of urgency. That, that's what we saw here with these sports coming back. Uh, everybody has the same risk. And, you know, at, at this point, we're just, we're just looking to push the brand and – Keep the keep the sports going. Um, revenue is about forty percent of um, payroll numbers. So I mean, it's it's hard on the owners uh, to to be able to, to pay the players and do everything else. But I mean, at this point, with most with almost all of America taking losses, left, right, and center. Yeah, every every industry. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, like it's, ba it's basically what they have to do. You know, million dollar companies. You know, it's 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 tough, but at the same time. You know, you gotta you gotta keep pushing it back, and you gotta take care of the fans. You know. So, what are the logistics of 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 bringing bringing baseball back? Is it crowdless? Is it is are they coming back? With what was going yeah, on? Yeah, everybody everybody's looking at no crowds right now, um, which which would be the smartest decision to do, uh, just for the players' health and the the, the people's health health uh, as well, because. You know, we have a, we have situations where everything is unprecedented. So mm -hmm. what what all these sports are about to embark on is unprecedented. So there's really nothing to gauge on. There's not you know, and it's too risky to make mistakes at this point. That's why it's taken so long for them to come back. Yeah, the the, the cliche new normal, right? Yeah. The new normal. Eh? It's just it's it's tough. I I, I kind of was a little, like I was a little conflicted initially when I heard the reports that that baseball players did have concerns with the risk, because for the for the simple ta for the simple just point of so many essential workers that take those risks on a daily basis, and then you have players who make an insurmountable amount of money that, you know, speak of these concerns, and it's like, you know what, you have this, you've taken the same risk that, that essential workers across, across the world, because this is a global pandemic, across the world take in order to continue uh, contributing to the economy. So if, if a sports game could make an essential worker's day just a little bit uh, or just alleviate the stress of a essential worker's day just by turning on a ball game, then hey, let's get to it. And if it and if it means you're gonna get half half to pay for one year and solely one year alone, let's get to it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like look at the one of the the beginning um, proposals from baseball was that any player who didn't want to participate didn't have to participate. Like, are you kidding me? Like, are, are we really going to get to a situation where? People just don't want to make the money, and you know, while, every, while everybody else in America, the essential workers, are sacrificing and uh -huh. doing what they can out there in much more dangerous situations. That's right. And That's you, right. you're gonna have, you're, you're not gonna just show up and like everybody's gonna be in a bubble. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be around everybody else. You know, like your teammates and stuff. But I mean, come on, like, well, we have multi-million dollar players and staying in these plush places, and like they're gonna be the most protected out of anybody. And then you have. You know, your firefighters, your police officers, That's right. everybody else down the road, um, making the ultimate sacrifices. I mean, it's kind of it's, it's kind of hard to gauge. Very hard to gauge, but th at the same time, you do understand. And but that, at the end of the day, they're spoiled. You know, it's, these are spoiled individuals. Even though they worked very hard, and let me not take nothing away from a professional athlete. You worked your whole life for this. You trained your whole life for this, and I guess these are the moments that make you make it accountable for the money that you make where you go like yeah we're going to do this for america we're going to yeah. do this for our country this is our this is our duty cuz back in the day they used to have to get drafted to go to war and you would and you would you know take a chunk out of your legacy to to go to war but you did it for your country and i think now that we're in a global pandemic you have to look at it like you know what i have a, a duty and a responsibility to do this for for the overall collective of society rather than just doing it to get a check 
Absolutely. That, I, I, I think that's... that's they they got to put their best foot forward. That's why, like, baseball, if they don't come back, then we're looking at a really, really dark situation in baseball. You know, aside mm -hmm. from, you know, it, it is dangerous, but then you have... How are you going to have other sports coming back and, you know, you're, you're not coming back because it's not safe? You know, it's, it, it's, it's not going to be relatable. It's not going to be... Especially, I mean... Out, if, if if they're all outdoor games, that's even that's even more of a of a reason to play because you know absolutely it's, it's, it's not as entrapped as a basketball See, I arena didn't even, I, or hockey would be. I didn't even think about that. I, I forgot how there's there's very little domes now in yeah. baseball. Yeah, so I mean they're, they're gonna pick central places to play. Um, you know everything everything unfortunately is still in the preliminary stage because of the magnitude of what is going on and making sure that it is a safe place to play um hockey seems to be the the closest they're on uh they're in phase three of um of reopening so um basketball hasn't uh they, they've just been doing tryouts i think they're still on um phase one and baseball is still uh still dragging it down there <laughs> so yeah i mean so listen from from uh, from us to them mlb get it together Get it together, cause other sports. Are, I mean, UFC is, is is hosting live events on a constant basis, almost almost weekly at this point. Yeah. So it's like you guys beat you got guys and women. I mean, I just say you got men and women beating each other up, bleeding on top of each other. Got the referee in the octagon with them, yep. and they're still taking those risks in order to 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 push the sport forward because UFC is such a brand new sport per se in comparison with baseball, football, basketball. They're still trying to push it forward. Um, boxing is trying to figure it out too. Pro, I think pro wrestling has not stopped. Oh, pro like, wrestling, it has yeah, not right. stopped the whole time. Yeah, like, they, they, they have their Monday shows, they have their uh, Thursday, Friday shows whenever they record it. I mean, they they have not stopped. Like they are the benchmark for everybody yeah. else to to go through this. I mean, you know, like you have you have your individual sports and you have your uh, your team sports where you have like between twenty to fifty people and all around the same area. So I mean, it's a little different, but at the end of the day, um, you know that there's there's tons of New Yorkers jumping on the trains uh, around four or five o'clock every day. You know, like there's there's different situations where people are keeping themselves safe. I can't imagine that these these players wouldn't have the most optimal situations to make sure that they do not get sick or make other people sick. Let's not forget the extended production of televising sports. Those people that are going to take those risks too for a fraction of the price of what the performers or the athletes uh, get paid. I agree, but I mean, I'd say everybody's spread out. You know, like you have one cameraman here, you got one cameraman over there. You know, maybe the the, the booths would be a little a little packed, but I mean, I don't know if there'd be like more than ten people. Maybe they have to cut it down a little bit. Yeah, they have to cut it down. Yeah. Get go into a skeleton crew type thing. Yeah, the, the the biggest impact is just the fans, like having you know fifty thousand people not. In attendance, you know, it, it it hurts the bottom line. It hurts uh, the other jobs that would be created from mm -hmm. people having concessions That's and right. uh, merchandise sales. And um, you know, the, it it affects a lot. But at the end of the day, I think it's it's more important for uh, North America to um, make sure that they that they put on shows for for fans. And Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Especially, I mean, it's it's rough out there. Um, but uh, one last thing before we have to go. Um, all right, so uh, the NHL right now has uh, 24 teams as a playoff structure. Uh, the, their typical is 16. Um, they are moving into a kind of like a like, a like a wild card round of eight teams that will play against each other and then jump into the regular 16 tournament. Um, basketball right now is uh, – looking at a 20-team format where they will uh, play a couple of regular season games and figure out well, who will be the sixth team that go into the playoffs. NHL's throwing everybody in there. Anybody, yeah. It's anybody's game, you know, like that, that type of style. I, I like it, though. I'm, 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 I'm a fan of that type of tourney, like where anybody, anyone has a chance to win a cup. Well, there's, there's 31 teams, so there's seven teams that are not going to be invited. But I think the, the biggest part about it is um, it, it – it takes away the what could have happened in those last 10 games of the season. You know, like what if or, you know, anything could happen. You know, those those kind of situations. All of that's eliminated, and I think it's complaint-proof uh, going with yeah, the 2014 yeah, tournament. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you know, the top teams won't be happy about it, but at the end of the day, I think it was the right move to make. Absolutely. So what we, what, we wrapping it up? 
let's wrap it up. Uh, this, uh, this is our first, our first, uh, our first show, first episode, ep, whatever you want to call it. I'm your boy Joe Brio, and I'm Alfonso. This is LDM Radio coming from the epicenter of the coronavirus, and we're New York Tough. Peace. Whoop whoop. <laughs>